It started completely simply because I had a terrible week. Uh, I was walking home one evening and the traffic was at a standstill and a guy started shouting out of his car window at me something about my legs and then the guy in the next car started to see if he could shout something a bit worse and they were kind of shouting obscene sexual things at me and I put my head down and I carried on home and I kind of didn't mention it to anyone because you know it's the way things are and that's where the Everyday Sexism Project was born. It was a website where anybody from anywhere in the world um, of any background, any gender identity, any sexual orientation could share any experience of gender inequality from street harassment to workplace discrimination to sexual violence. Um, it started in 2012 and um, very quickly women from all over the world started adding their voices um, and it grew into a sort of international phenomenon. So three years later we have 100,000 stories from people all over the world. We have branches in 20 countries worldwide and we've been able to start taking the stories that we received online and taking them offline to create hopefully concrete change. So for example, we took about 2,000 stories that came from women just on buses and tubes and we used them to work directly with the British Transport Police. Um, they were looking at how they could tackle the problem, so we were able to really show them in women's own words what was happening, what the problem was, but also why people didn't feel able to report to the police. They didn't think they'd be taken seriously, they didn't think they'd be believed. And they used that information to train 2,000 of their frontline officers and also to create a kind of public awareness campaign and that campaign has raised the reporting of sexual offences on public transport by 30%. So it's great to feel like there are ways of actually using these women's stories hopefully to prevent the next generation from going through the same thing. There are laws which discriminate against women. Um, there are countries, for example, where marital rape isn't a crime. Um, and I think that there is all kinds of things that we can call on governments to legislate to help the situation. Um, I think in England, for example, we desperately need compulsory sex and relationships education on the curriculum so that we can talk to young people openly about things like healthy relationships and sexual consent. So we definitely need help from lawmakers and governments. But I think it's also about a societal shift. It's about the kind of normalised social attitudes and behaviours towards women that I think help to create a gateway towards the more serious abuses. You know, if it's okay to shout at women in the street and if it's okay to see their bodies as there for public consumption, then I think it's quite difficult to try and force people to respect them in the workplace. Um, if we want to look at the underrepresentation of women in politics, we have to address the fact that when women are promoted to our cabinet, the newspapers report on it under headlines like the catwalk of the Downing Street cuties. I think those things matter. I think the way that we treat women in one area has an effect on the way that they're treated elsewhere, which means that we can all play a part in changing things.